We're talking today about how to insulate and renovate a full masonry building. We're at our West 10th Street project, and remember this is a historic 1876 built house with two foot thick masonry walls. I've got my friend Christoph Irwin. Christoph is an engineer and a building science geek like myself. <laughs> uh, Christoph's company does some really awesome stuff for me. They do mechanical designs, modeling, testing, all kinds of building science related uh, work. And we wanted to have a conversation today about how to remodel, how to upgrade the efficiency of this house and also how that might relate to somebody watching this video who's in another part of the North Americas. You know, there's so many houses like this that have either double wide or triple wide masonry walls. Maybe that's CMU, maybe that's other materials, not necessarily rock like we have on this house. But I think this video is gonna be applicable to a lot of people. Yeah. So as we renovate this, uh, Christoph, what are, what are the first two things we need to talk about here? Well, we're thinking about control layers and we're thinking about mass effect, so. Mm -hmm. Control layers are, as you know, in priority order. What's the first one? Water, bulk water. Bulk water, so we wanna make sure that the roof is in good shape, that it's shedding, that if there are gutters, downspouts, that our sills, our door sills, everything that is intended to shed water to the outside is working. Yeah. And next one is? Airflow. Airflow, we wanna make sure that we recognize that though it doesn't seem like it, air can flow both around this assembly and through this assembly. There's cracks, as they're visible over here, carrying with it a lot of water. Water is the third one, vapor, water vapor moving through this wall. Mm -hmm. As massive as it is, it is open when it comes to water vapor. Water vapor yeah. can move from the outside in and that is where it is here in summertime in Texas. So a quick example of that, meaning if this, if this rock wall gets wet on the outside from rain or sprinklers, that moisture is gonna migrate through the wall and it could add humidity to the house, correct? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So it's hot and humid outside, cool and dry inside. Hot to cold, wet to dry. Both drives are toward the interior, Ab absolutely right. And what's that last control layer? So that's the one, the thermal control layer, that's the one about comfort, that's the one about, um, mainly all about the occupant, all about energy use. In terms of durability of the building, it was done before you got to thermal control. But what we had here is, you know, if you look at strictly as our value, you have a pretty abysmal situation. We have maybe <laughs> an R2, I mean, probably not even an R2, that's optimistic. But in terms of comfort, it was still working because this wall, because it took a long time for the heat to move through it, it stayed cool for the long portions of the day. And because it's cooler than you, you radiate heat to it, you lose heat, you feel cool. So that cooling effect was happening here. Where does that heat go, right? We just talked about you radiating to the wall. Well, at night, in an area where it gets colder at night, well, by then the heat from the day might be radiating to you to warm you on the inside. Mm -hmm. Here in Texas, what we would really hope is if this is the outdoor temperature, that as the heat of the day gets colder, that now the drive is from the inside to the outside so that heat goes back out. Yeah. That'll happen many days of the year. Mm -hmm. Clear summer nights when the night sky radiation can suck the heat off of the building will get that effect on this. But generally speaking, the diurnal effect is the dominant one yeah. for, for the effectiveness of a mass wall. And that's not well understood. IECC treats it uh, very kind of broadly. They don't talk about diurnal effect. And if it is not the night sky or not the cold outdoor conditions that are cooling this wall off at night, what is it? It's your mechanical system. Yeah. Again, kaboom, you have a benefit here. You have your mechanical system operating at night. There's less load on the building. The mechanical system is operating more efficiently at night, so it's cooling off the building more efficiently. So this mass wall is working for you. Which brings to the point of what do we do with this house? You know, we talked about early on in this project, how do we insulate it? How do we increase the efficiency? And I think for a cooling dominated climate, if you're in the south, you know, it actually makes sense to, to take full advantage of that, not insulate on the inside. The yeah. ideal place to insulate would be on the outside. Yeah. You know, do a, do a, let's say a weather resistive barrier that's fluid applied on the outside, at an airspace and also get some great rigid foam insulation, let's say in the outside. Right. But here we've got a historic building. I've got a plaque out front. I cannot <laughs> change the look on this one. We're gonna insulate the heck out of the roof. You know, we're gonna do a great roof line with rigid foam on top, with spray foam on the inside. We're gonna make it super airtight. We've got good shade from this house with this three-sided porch. Yeah. We're gonna also make sure we've got a good um, metal roof on the outside that's gonna provide a good radiant barrier. So we're gonna add a ton of insulation there, and your company's doing the mechanical design for us. We're gonna be using a, a VRF system here that's a very high efficiency. 
Talk to me about how that mechanical design integrates with, uh, with a house like this with the thermal mass. So the thermal mass is going to introduce uh, load variations over time that are going to shift, basically shift the heat load to later in the day. That's how it's going to help. Yeah. It's going to work efficiently whether you have full load or part load. Okay, and last topic that we want to, that we want to jump into is what would we do differently, Christoph, if someone who's watching this in Michigan has a building that's similar to this, how would, how would we do this project differently? Right, well, the, the biggest difference there, the most important one to take away is where you would put the vapor barrier, the vapor control layer. Mm -hmm. You would move it to the inside in those heating dominated climates. So okay. Minneapolis, something like that. Here we would prefer it to be on the outside. So in this case, how would we, can you give me a couple of assembly ideas on how we might do that on, on a house like this, full masonry? Sure, yeah. You could either be um, applying a surface to, to this material itself, mm -hmm. a dimple mat, drainage mat with a ventilated rain screen, and then insulation on the inside. Or you could do what's more commonly done is you would just build a stud wall right here. Yeah. And that stud wall would afford you the opportunity to insulate it and to detail the air control air carefully. Hey, Christoph, thank you so much for joining me. For more on Christoph and his company, uh, his website is positiveenergy.pro. Correct. And look up his podcast. They publish new content about every two weeks. It's the Building Science Podcast available on all the major outlets, including iTunes out there. Mm -hmm. And stay tuned for more from The Build Show. This house, uh, we're going to be publishing some great content from here. Look for hashtag West 10th. And, of course, check out our social media links. Hit that subscribe button below. We'll see you next time.